Silent structure, simple and complex. We're going to run through this quick because I don't even think Jeff's here. Is is he? Um, no. So we're going to start with simple structure, and then we're going to do a complex structure over here. Guys, um, most local stuff, complex structure is overkill. You don't need it, okay, M for most. Um, if you've got local stuff that's going to be covering a broad territory, like a lot of different areas, then complex structure is okay. I uh, recommend it, but again, for a lot of stuff, uh, I think it's overcomplicated. In fact, like Peter Garrity, um, he teaches to always build structure the same way, style structure the same way, and Jaunty will benefit from this. And in, uh, I am going to get to you, Jaunty, in a moment. I'm going to probably wrap up with you. Um, your main keyword, which is what you want to rank for, go go broad. You want to go very broad. You're very high level. You don't. The old days of going with narrow, exact match domains and building these one-page wonder sites over one uh, term is gone. You, you don't want to do that anymore. You want to go broad, and you want to go narrow, and then you can build out silos for each term, and you can build an authority site that way. And so what Peter Garrity talks about, and Network Empire does the same thing, they talk about a broad-level term that's going to be your main money site or your main money term. Eventually, you want to rank for that. And then to figure out, Peter Garrity says four silos. He always says find four secondary keywords, and then you find at least three, I think it's even four or five, secondary keywords for each silo. Now, this I'm going to try to make this quick instead of pretty, guys, so just excuse my crude drawing skills. Um, so that's talking about def defining the silo headings, which these would be your silo headings, okay, and then finding supporting keywords for each silo. So essentially... This be your main broad term. From there, you're going to find four. Let's go back to this image just for a minute right here. This is talking about this being your main money term. This could actually even be a silo right here. So let's say tree service right here. This is general tree service. Tree removal could be a silo, right? Because then another silo could be tree trimming. Another silo could be, um, you know, um, stump grinding or landscaping. That could be another silo on, the, on a tree service site, okay? So, but finding secondary or supporting keywords, right? So these these are these, this is your main term. These are going to be supporting keywords to support this main term. Then you find you find supporting keywords here that support each one of these terms individually. Okay, so let me flatten this for a minute, and I'm just going to take a line here and make it very very simple. All of these keywords support this keyword, right? All of these support this. You guys get the idea. This supports this. This supports this. Now, that's what's called a simple silo structure. The way that you would build that out would be like this. And I'm going to just create a new page real quick. Okay. So what you would do is you would say this is your home page. This would be your silo page. Okay. And this would be your supporting keywords. This is what's called a simple silo structure. All right. So at the same level, a silo page is going to be a category as well. In fact, I'm just going to put that in parentheses here. So this is a page. I've got it listed right there as page. I don't want this to get confused here. Um, Peter Garrity has a plugin called P1 Traffic Machine, I believe. That's his silo plugin, and it will do this automatically for you. But this is how you you do this. You can do this manually too for simple simple. Silo structure, you can do this manually as well. A silo page is you also create in WordPress a corresponding category page. It can share the same slug or permalink. Okay, so for example, in my tree tree service uh, example, this could be tree service, the home page, right? That's the main keyword. If this were tree removal, I would have a page on the site called tree removal. That would be the title. Okay, um, and then the category would also be called tree removal, and it would share the same slug or a permalink. In that case, I would probably just call it removal, okay? Not tree removal, but just removal. So in the permalink itself, in fact, that would look like this. So I'm going to say domain.com forward slash removal. That, this is the level we're at right here, okay? Right here. That's the level we're at with the corresponding category. Then from here, it would be supporting, in fact, I would call these supporting posts in a simple silo structure. These would be posts, not pages. All right. And what these would be is longer tail in nature. This is where you could hit the, the keyword actually and the title, that sort of stuff. If we go back to our drawing, now we're talking about these right here. These are posts. 
Okay, so this would be if this were the home page, this would be your side of the landing page, this would be your, your posts. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Um, as far as a very simple, if at that case, it, it like if we were going to say tree removal, and then we'd say best tree removal prices, right? That would be our post. Okay, so that's what's called a simple side of the structure. Now, before I move on to complex, um, I just want to talk very briefly about the fact that. Jaunty, I know that you said you're a bit overwhelmed, and so my point in showing four silo structures here, and um, um, Network Empire says to do at least three and have them five levels deep. So this is called width right here, right, and this is called depth. And uh, Network Empire's definition of a silo is five supporting articles plus the silo landing page, so it's six articles and a silo to make it a true silo. That may be, that, that's true. I'm not, not going to argue with them at all, but for most local stuff, you don't need that. I've been able to rank local silos with two supporting articles, right? So silo heading and two supporting articles, all right? But, and Peter Garrity always talks about four, having four secondary keywords. And yes, that's important if you want to, but look, my point is, is you can create what's called a monosilo. A monosilo is one silo, one silo, and monetize that first, get, or get that generating traffic first. Before adding all this, because it's difficult to put all these together, and again, this is this is this is how I do it with four sites. Is I would do this, and I'm just going to put one red line here. Let me flatten and grab this line. All right, do this, right? So your your site create your main money site. Figure out what, what you can figure out all your keywords that you want to work on all at once. I would suggest you do that. Lay out a map, you know, create a map, a keyword map of what your site structure is going to be. But fix, set up one silo first because think about this. This is a lot of content to come up with all at once, but this isn't right. So go deep on one silo first and get that to start showing you some results. Then go repeat that process with your next silo. Then do it again with your third silo, but do it one entire silo at a time, so that you 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 start to really grasp the concept, learn the internal linking from inside the silo up to your silo landing page, and then back to your home page. Just make it simple. Instead of going right off the bat, you can't you know you got to learn how to walk before you can run that sort of thing. So instead of trying to hit the ground running, walk first. Figure out one silo and go after it that way. Right? That's that's why I suggest doing that because I think that it people get um, bogged down and try. You know, it is. It's very overwhelming to come up with all those keywords. The research part you might want to do all at once. That's fine. But trying to put that structure together and fully flesh it out with content, especially being a newbie, that can be a bit more complex than what you'd want to do. Okay. Instead, I suggest focus on one silo. Pick one top-level keyword. In this case, in my, my example, let's just say it was tree removal. Then I would figure out my long-tail keyword for, terms for that. Go ahead and build all that out. Do the, in, the proper internal linking. And I know he's got um, some good um, training on that, the on-page SEO training. Uh, he's, he's good at that. So just follow that training. Do your on-page linking properly and you'll st and start tracking the results and you'll see that your keywords in this silo will start to come up and start to surface and you'll have a better understanding when you start your second silo of how it all works. And then you can repeat that process over and over again instead of trying to do it all at once. And besides, when you spread your attention and your resources out too thin across all of these, it's going to take a lot longer to see results than if you put all of your attention into one silo, you'll see faster results. And you know what? Results will spur you to action. You know, they'll excite you and to get you to creating more. So that's what a simple silo structure is. For most sites, that's all you're going to need. But let's do the same exact setup here, but with a... Um, look what time it is. And we're running out of time. Silo page category, I'm going to have to... It won't fit on one line if I don't. But this is going to be a complex... Silo structure, which child category or subcategory could be called subcategory. Now, this is not something you're going to want to do manually. Uh, silo page, I'm going to call this a parent page. You don't want to do this manually. You're going to want to use a plugin that does this. Um, Ultimate SEO, they've got. Um, 
I think their actual ultimate SEO plugin will actually do this now, but they also have I think I think so. I was playing with it the other day in one of my test sites and I think it does silo setup. Also Network Empire has a free a silo um, builder plugin that will do this. I don't think I don't think Peter I think Peter Gary's only does a simple silo. But in a complex silo is going to have a parent page and then a child page which is also a subcategory and then your supporting posts beyond that. And so that gets to be pretty deep in the URL structure. Um, and that, again, again, is only if you really need it, if you're going to be covering like a large area or multiple cities and that sort of thing. So that's why I typically don't um, recommend that unless you are advanced. So, like, I'm not trying to confuse you, John. This is actually for Jeff more than you at this point because he was asking about this. Yes. And I was trying to tell him that, you know, if, you, if you're going to build a site um, covering multiple cities, then it would make sense. But in this case, let's just say we wanted to do, and I'll show you an example with um, location, because that's, I do a lot of silo work with locations, but let's say emergency removal, and in fact, I wouldn't actually have removal and URL if this was what I was uh, doing, but if you take a look at this, the difference here is you'd set up a parent page and, and a matching category page, then you set up a child page, and this you can do in WordPress, when you um, create a new page on the right hand side bar where the widgets are for the page itself like the, the WordPress editor and all that, that you see the widgets on the side there is a drop down where you can select as a child page uh, you know you can say okay no I want to make this page a parent page when you're creating this page I don't know if that makes sense but you can do that okay and once you create that you go into the categories you go to post categories click on that and then you set up a, a subcategory that has that matches the exact same title as the page and you do the same thing you select a parent category and you would assign the parent category here okay then your post your post would get so every time you make a post you're gonna select a category for your post you're gonna select your subcategory so that it looks more like this let me open up a new one real quick uh, let's see All right. This gets a little bit more complex, so we're only going to do this on one silo. But what we would do here is this would be a supporting category, or this would be a silo landing page. This would be a sub, um, subcategory here. This could be another subcategory. We'll move this over here, and then we'll do some posts. We're just going to do three posts. Okay, and now let me get an arrow. Okay, so this is what's called a complex silo structure. All right, you'd have your home page. This would be your parent page or your top level silo. If we go back to this document right here, that's going to be this page right here. Okay which is also a category. We go back to the drawing, and here was what you call child pages or subcategories. Okay? And then these are going to be posts. So you would select... This is what you do if you're going after... If you're building an authority site, or if you're building a very broad site that has a lot of sub-niches, or if you're going to build out a um, local site that covers a broad territory, and I can show you how to build a... Uh, structure on that here in just a second. But the point is here is the reason why you only you would do this for very competitive terms as well. The reason why is because now you can get a lot more control over th theme um, sculpting, right? Theme sculpting, what I mean by that is pushing thematic relevance of keywords, um, the way that you stack them and the way that you direct the flow of that relevancy, okay? And that's that's why you would use a complex silo structure. I think this is overkill for most of the stuff that I talk to with uh, students and with people that I think they try to set up structures like this when it's completely unnecessary. Now, again, if you're doing an authority site, yes. Or if you're going after something incredibly competitive, yes, you'd want to do this. But for most stuff, it's necessary because a simple silo structure is easier to do, in my opinion. Um, and this is a more an advanced thing. Now, just again, top level page, child page, and subcategory posts. The posts you select 
uh, the category that they would fit in the best. Okay, Adam, thanks, man. Sorry this went so long, dude. Appreciate your help. Um, you want to, in your post, you're going to internally link up to your silo category, your, your category uh, right here. From here, you have a link back up to your silo um, landing page, the, the top level page, right? And from here, you use so the, the idea here is that all of these, you know, as you're building links, let's do this. Let's call these inbound links, right? So, in fact, if you've got IFTTT network, what are these? These are links coming from your IFTTT network properties, right? Each time, because these are posts. These are what gets syndicated out across your network, not these. These are pages, right? All of these right here are pages. They're not going to syndicate across your network, but posts are. What did I talk about earlier? Frequency of publishing, right? Posting with the real long tail terms, and if we go back to this image again, same thing. This is this is just one level deeper. But your long tail terms are your posts. That's these here. You see the green? These are long tail posts. Okay, so that's what are down here, and these get syndicated across your network. And what happens is your network links are going to, from your IFTTT networks are going to be coming in here, and it's going to push juice through the link on your post up to your top level category page. And this one's going to do the same, and this one's going to do the same, and then there's going to be one link on this pe this category page that links up to the top level silo, and all that juice is going to collect and cumulatively go through that one link up to this page, which is going to push that really competitive term up in the search results. Right? That's a much more complex structure than what's really needed, um, in my opinion. For most things, there are times that it's handy. If we're going to talk about location silos, we're going to do that very quickly. Uh, location silos, this is how I would do it with this example right here. Is I would call, for example, if you're going to do like a multi-state site, I would say domain.com. Let's just use Virginia as an example. I would say Virginia, and then I would say forward slash county, like Fairfax. Um, Fairfax. We'll put county in the URL. You don't have to. Fairfax County, and then I would do the city. So let's say uh, Vienna. Vienna is a city in Fairfax County. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is if that's if you're doing multiple states. So for example, just to follow up with that, let's just say domain.com forward slash Maryland, which is a neighboring state, forward slash, let's say, Prince George, which is a county. And I don't really know of any cities in Prince George because I don't live there, but uh, we'll just call that city, right? So that's another way to do it, and that's, that's on the same site, right? So this would be, Virginia would be your top-level silo. Let's, let's just take a look at this for a minute because I want, I, want I want this to be clear. This would be Virginia. This would be county. So let's say Virginia, Fairfax County, Vienna, McLean. These are, these are cities within Fairfax County down here. Does this make sense? That's why when, when you're talking about a local site that's going to cover a broad area, the, a, a complex structure is perfect for that because you can get very, very logical with the structure of your site. It's incredibly effective. That's how I build most of my lead gen sites now because they typically cover broader areas. In fact, I do that on subdomains too, but that's that's for another webinar. But the point is, is that you can get very, very broad with these sites or uh, very narrowly focused in a location this way. So again, for example, here's another another county in Virginia would be Prince William County. So let's say Virginia, let's say this is a tree service lead gen site. Then this would be Virginia, this would be Fairfax County, this would be Vienna, McLean, Tyson's Corner. Those are three cities in Fairfax. Here's Prince William County, Manassas, Gainesville, Haymarket. Those are three different cities. All of them pointing up to the top. Remember, all the cities in that county can be listed and each one of them point a link back up to the county, that's very, very logical, to, to not only to Google, the, the robots, right, but also to humans. Because anybody that lives in those areas are going to know that structure of geography anyways, right? It's very logical. So it makes sense for local sites to have complex structure. Um, then you would have over here, if, if we were to create a new circle, over here could be Maryland, right? Same thing, Maryland, you'd have Prince George's County, Anne Arundel County, you'd have different counties over here. And you'd have cities pointing up to those, so you can get a you know you can build an authority local site that way very quickly. Another way to do it that's if you're doing different states. Another way to do it is if you're going to cover just like let's just say one state, um, and we'll just use it uh, again um, Virginia as the example. 
And if the entire site is built about, is built around, you know, the, the whole the whole theme of the site is Virginia in this case, then you wouldn't need to have this as a top level silo, right? But maybe what you want to do at that point is you want to do counties and then cities. Let's say you're going after a more competitive term like DUI attorneys or um, personal injury attorneys. Very, very, very competitive niche. So you might want to use a complex. Well, you probably would want to use a complex structure if you're targeting Virginia. Um, personal injury attorneys, and here's why. Let's go back to the Fairfax County example. Let's say Fairfax County, and I probably wouldn't put county in the slug or the permalink. I'd probably reduce that. But let's say um, we're going to do Reston. Let's say Reston is a city. Let's do this again. Name.com forward slash Fairfax County forward slash. Let's say Vienna. We used Vienna before. Let's use that again. Vienna. Now, take a look at how this stacks up, right? This is this is this is the a page at this level still. If we take a look, this is domain.com. Oh, I'm sorry, up here, home silo page, right? Child page, posts. Right now, there's no posts yet. So if I was calling, if I was going after, um, you know, um, like I said, attorneys, personal injury attorneys, and I wanted to cover Northern Virginia area, and these are two cities in Northern Virginia, in Fairfax County, in fact then right now this is the second page level. This is not even at the post level. So what I could do here is I would target personal injury attorney, right? Maybe what I could do here from that point is I could actually personal injury, uh, let's say, let's, let's do this to, to switch it up a little bit. We'll call this one accident lawyer, right? So now, if, and I'm not going to flesh this one out too because it's the same concept, but my point is if we go back to this image here, this would be Fairfax County right here, right? Based on this URL that we're looking at right here on this page, what I'm talking about, Fairfax County would be that level, Reston, and personal injury attorney, accident lawyer, right? So this would be, oops, Fairfax County, Reston, or Vienna, it could be, you know, whatever city, then it would be personal injury attorney here, accident lawyer here. Maybe it's motorcycle accident or slip and fall accident attorney. You know, those are all supporting keywords that would be targeting this page right here, which would just be the very broad personal injury attorney or, uh, you know, um, attorneys in Fairfax, for example, or attorneys in Reston, which would all link up to here. And the same thing could go for the next city. All right. So again, you just, you, you keep stepping up the, the, the concept. You go from very, very narrow, which would be down here to a little bit more broad, to even more broad to the most broad, all right. And so when it comes to location type sites, that's very uh, that's why that's so effective. Complex structure.